Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Buffalo Bacon Meatloaf. That's right, this magnificent loaf of meat features delicious and nutritious buffalo. And as if that wasn't enough, we're also going to cover it with America's most ubiquitous breakfast meat, bacon. And by the way, I'm not one of these people that will just add bacon to anything. I mean, people go crazy with this stuff. I once saw a woman wearing a dress made out of bacon. Although I do have to admit, she did look delicious. But anyway, there's nothing gratuitous about its addition here, as it's going to provide some much needed fat and of course flavor. But anyway, let's get this started by cooking some of the aforementioned bacon in some butter. Oh yeah, that's always a good way to start a recipe. So we'll cook some sliced up bacon in a little bit of butter in a skillet set over medium heat. And we want to cook this almost but not quite crisp, which is of course going to take five or 10 minutes. So keep an eye on it. But while that's working, we can go ahead and get our vegetables together. So in a bowl, I have a beautiful array of vegetables featuring onions, carrots, and celery. We're also going to do some mushrooms and some pepper. And I have two kinds. I'm going to use some red and a green poblano. And I think we'll also throw in a few cloves of garlic. That should be good in this. And what we'll do is we'll cook these vegetables in that bacon butter mixture, but not like this. What we want to do first is grind these in the food processor fairly small. All right, we don't want a super wet puree, but we do want to pulse on and off until we have something pretty fine. And by the way, anytime you're doing something like this, make sure you stop a couple times and take a spatula and scrape down your sides so everything ends up about the same size. So we'll keep blitzing on and off until we end up with something that looks like this. So like I said, we're going to grind it pretty small, but we don't want a big soupy mess here. So don't go too fine. Make it look like this. And by now, hopefully, that bacon that's been cooking in the butter on medium is ready. So at this point, we'll go ahead and transfer the vegetables into our pan. And we'll cook those stirring occasionally until they soften and sweeten up for about five minutes or so. All right, we're not trying to caramelize them or brown them, but we do want to take the raw edge off. And while that's happening, I am going to add a small pinch of dried rosemary. I generally don't like a really herby meatloaf. But we will stir in a little bit of dried rosemary because that's going to work really well with the bacon and the buffalo. And then, like I said, we'll cook that for about five minutes until it softens up and kind of looks like this. And it's hard to tell by looks, but if you were to taste a little bit of this, it would not taste raw. So that's looking good. At that point, we will turn off the heat and move on to the breadcrumb stage. So in a bowl, I have a couple cups of fresh breadcrumbs. Those are not dry. That's just the inside of a day-old loaf of Italian or French bread. And of course, you could do that in your food processor also. I just broke them up with my hands. And what we'll do is we'll add our cooked vegetable mixture to these crumbs, along with a splash of whole milk. And we'll give that a very thorough mixing before we add the rest of the ingredients. Speaking of which, we don't want to add those if this mixture is really hot. So once we mix this up, we should probably let it cool to room temp before adding the rest of the ingredients. Now, did I? Not really. I let it cool a little, but it was still kind of warm. But officially, let it cool to room temp. And then once that does cool down, we will proceed with the rest of the ingredients, which include some freshly ground black pepper, and some salt, of course. We also want to give it a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce, as well as one large egg. And then let's do just a little shake of cayenne, or a big shake, up to you. You are the meatloaf of your meatloaf. And then what we'll do is we'll give this a mix before adding the star of the show, the buffalo. And by the way, while it is nutritious and delicious, ground buffalo does provide a couple challenges. It's generally very, very lean, and for whatever reason, it's sold ground very finely. All right, two things that aren't necessarily great if you're making meatloaf. So to counter that, that's why we're doing the recipe with fresh breadcrumbs and all those vegetables. This way, despite the issues with the buffalo meat, we're still going to get a very juicy, very moist loaf. So we'll toss in a couple pounds, and we'll mix that all together. I'm going to use my bare hands, as it's the best tool for this. And once we do have this all mixed together, we will transfer it into a lightly greased baking dish and form it into your classic meatloaf shape. What is that, four or five inches wide, three or four inches high? And at this point, if you were just making regular meatloaf, you just toss it in the oven, but we're not. We are going to shroud this in bacon. And if you do shape yours into a similar size, one strip of thick cut bacon should fit perfectly over the top with just enough on either end to tuck it in. So we'll cover that in bacon. Then as you can see, if need be, you can use the tip of a knife to kind of finish pushing that bacon underneath. And that is looking bacon wrapped and ready for the oven. So at this point, we can transfer our meatloaf into the center of a preheated 350 degree oven for about an hour or until done. I usually shoot for an internal temp of about 155. And by the way, if you want, about halfway through, we can pull out the meatloaf and baste it with a glaze. And yes, this step is optional, but I do it because I'm all about that baste, about that baste. It's no trouble. It just takes a minute. So I'm going to brush over a very simple brown sugar glaze. I'll give you the recipe on the blog. But it's just rice vinegar, brown sugar, and mustard. And once that's been applied, we can go ahead and pop that back in until, like I said, we have an internal temp of about 155, at which point we'll pull it out 
and you should be looking at one of the most beautiful meatloafs you've ever seen. And then I know it's not going to be easy, but you really do want to let this sit for at least 10 minutes before you cut into it. But I was starving and wanted to finish the video, so I sliced right in, and as you can hopefully see from this shot, we have a meatloaf that's not only beautiful on the outside, but incredibly tender and moist on the inside. I mean, look how juicy that is. So let me go ahead and cut off one nice big slice and serve it up properly next to some veggies and mashed potatoes, along with some classic mushroom gravy. By the way, mushroom gravy sold separately. I know we have a video for that, or you could just make a gravy with the drippings. And I hope it's pretty obvious to see how incredibly moist and tender this meatloaf really is. It really does melt in your mouth. And of course the bacon helped. And what does buffalo taste like? Pretty much exactly like grass-fed beef. And what does grass-fed beef taste like? Pretty much like corn-fed beef, except maybe the tiniest, tiniest bit more gamey. And I mean really tiny. You probably won't even notice it. Okay, so buffalo is nothing to be afraid of. Unless, of course, you're talking about an actual live buffalo. They can kill you. But as far as ground buffalo meat goes, there's nothing to fear, as I hopefully showed you here. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.